The Grape Nuts Flakes program, coming to you from New York City, where we are playing to an audience of men on leave from the armed services and starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Dennis Day, Rochester, yours truly, Don Wilson, and our guest conductor, Benny Goodman. <laughs> Friends, have you ever noticed how some folks just sleep through their breakfast? Well, they drift to the table, they nibble at nothing, then they float to the station. And then all of a sudden, about halfway to lunch, they're wide awake with that hungry all-gone sensation. Well, here's what to do about that situation. You just bring on a breakfast that stars malty-rich, toasty brown grape nuts flakes. A bowl full of crisp, tempting, sweet as a nut grape nuts flakes acts as a really grand breakfast time eye-opener. For Grape Nuts Flakes bring you a wide-awake goodness, a flavor that teases your taste. That's because it's an outstanding, rich, two-grain blend of sun-ripened wheat and malted barley, combined in a very special way. So don't rely on the alarm clock and don't resort to icy showers. Eat up and wake up with delicious, malty-rich Grape Nuts Flakes. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure and honor to introduce the Bob Hope of the Grape Nuts Flakes program, Jack Benny! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, what do you mean the Bob Hope of the Grape Nuts Flakes program? I don't get it. Well, after all, Jack, there are a lot of similarities between you and Bob Hope, aren't there, Mary? Of course there are. Oh, yeah? Name one. Well, for one thing, he's on the radio and you're on the radio. True, true. And he's a comedian and you're a comedian. Yes. And yes. Hope started in vaudeville and you started in vaudeville. That's right. And Hope makes pictures at Paramount and Paramount kicked you out. <laughs> true. Now, wait a minute. I wasn't thrown out of Paramount. Then why did you leave? I asked them to put a shower in my dressing room. They punched holes in the roof. It didn't rain for 40 days, so I quit. <laughs> anyway, I made some swell pictures of Paramount, especially my last one, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Oh, now, hold on, Jack. Gary Cooper plays the lead in For Whom the Bell Tolls. Well, he might play the lead, but that bell doesn't ring by itself, brother. <laughs> I'm the guy, listen, Don, I'm, I'm the guy that pulls that rope. <laughs> they had a rope at Paramount, they'd have hung you a long time ago. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? Say, Mr. Benny, I took your violin over to get oh, a new... Oh, hello. Hello, Dennis. Hello. Say, Mr. Benny, I took your violin over to get a new bridge put on it like you told me to. What did, what did you say, Dennis? I said I took your violin over to get a new bridge put on it like you told me to. Oh, a new bridge on my violin, eh? How does it look? Well, I think the man overdid it a little. There's water running under it. <laughs> Water under the bridge? Let's see that violin. Well, I'll be darned, there is at that. Putting in the goldfish was my idea. <laughs> well, that's a fine fix you put me in. Now I'll have to use another fiddle for my performance tonight. You see, fellas, my agent booked me as the uh, guest violinist on a program later this evening. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, what program is it? If they want Jack to play the fiddle, it must be a shortwave broadcast to Tokyo. <laughs> it is not. It's a coast-to-coast -coast hookup. And as long as I've got that water under the bridge, I'm going to play the Blue Danube. And for a finish, you can eat the goldfish. <laughs> Just tune in to Fred Allen, sister. I'll do all right. I think Mr. Benny is one of the finest violinists I ever heard. Thanks, Dennis. I've got a job, and I'm going to keep it, by golly. <laughs> All right, kid, you gave me a beautiful compliment. Don't spoil it. 
Now, it's about time for your song, so let's have it. Okay. Say, Mr. Benny, I'll probably get slugged for this. Hmm. But when I got my check this week, there was something wrong with it. What do you mean, there was something wrong with it? Well, I'll probably get slugged for this. Stop saying that. <laughs> what was wrong with your check? Well, you took 5% off. What was that for? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked me that, kid. I've been meaning to explain it to you. Uh, Mary and Don, you might as well listen to this, too. Uh, since January 1st, 5% of all salaries and wages have been uh, withheld at the source. This has been officially designated as the victory tax. Oh, I get it. You deduct the money from our salaries and send it to Washington. Exactly. Is that clear to you, Dennis? Well, I'll probably get slugged for this. Will you stop saying that? <laughs> well, how do I know you turn this money into the government? I have to turn it in. That's the idea of it. And here's another important point for everybody. Patriotic Americans will not let this new and necessary tax interfere in any way with the commitments they have made for the regular purchase of war bonds. In Canada, folks should buy victory bonds and war-saving stamps. And now, Dennis, let's have your song. becomes you sung by Dennis Day, our own Irish Bluebird. And very good, Dennis. Irish Bluebird? Green is the color for the Irish, Mr. Benny. I know, I know. You know now. <laughs> I always did know. But if you want to be so technical, kid, you're an Irishman that's been out in the cold. You're a little blue. That makes you a blue blur. Well, speaking of birds, Jack, I have a very clever message which involves our feathered friends. <laughs> Would you like to hear it? Why? I mean, why surely, Don? Surely. <laughs> Go ahead. Now, see how many different birds you can pick out. Different birds? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you can always sparrow enough money for grape nuts flakes, mm -hmm. as they are very pheasant and easy to swallow. Well, there's sparrow, pheasant, and swallow. Go ahead. 
Whether you're a boy or a girl, you will eagerly await grape nuts flakes each morning. Well, there's gull and eagle. Peacock they contain. Peacock! <laughs> Peacock, they contain iron, niacin, and vitamin B1. Well, that's very good, Doc. Yes, considering I have a cold. Cockatoo! Uh, bless you. And down that was swell. I thrush. Everybody enjoyed it. <laughs> hey, I, uh, I got a bird in there, too. Here comes another one right from the Bronx. <laughs> Mary. And now, fellas, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll let you handle the rest of the program. I want to drop over and see Phil Baker at the hospital. Phil Baker? Oh, yes, I missed him on his program. What's he in the hospital for? Well, Phil went to the doctor to have his appendix examined. That's right. So he asked the doctor to take it or leave it, and he took it. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's exactly the way it happened, but he had his appendix out, and he's a pretty sick guy. Well, if he's so sick, this is no time to try and collect that $64 you didn't win when you were on his program. Listen, Mary, technically, I did win. He didn't pay me, that's all. Well, I'll probably get slugged for this. There he goes again. <laughs> well, I'll probably get slugged for this, but I don't understand what you're talking about. Uh, look, kid, a few weeks ago, Phil Baker beat me out of $64. That I have to see. <laughs> well, he did. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I heard the program you were on, and when Phil asked you the $64 question, you gave the wrong answer. I gave the right answer. Phil asked me if I could name 37 composers who try to finish Schubert's Unfinished Symphony. And I said, no, I couldn't. That's the right answer. <laughs> I'm going to the hospital now and straighten this thing out with Baker. Well, you'll never catch him when he's weaker. That's a, that's a point in my favor. Can I come along with you, Mr. Benny? What do you want to go to the hospital for? Well, maybe Mr. Baker has a beautiful nurse and I'll fall madly in love with her and ask her to marry me and she'll turn me down and I'll commit suicide. <laughs> what an imagination. Well, all right, you can come with me, kid. Now, where's, uh, where's Benny Goodman? Right here, Jack. Say, Jack, have you seen my clarinet? <laughs> right here. It's right there behind your ear. He wears it like a pencil, folks. Uh, uh, Benny, have you got a nice hot tune prepared for us? Yeah, I'm going to play one of the numbers I'm doing at the Paramount Theater this week. Oh, you had to give yourself a little plug, huh? <laughs> a little advertising, huh? Well, at least my hat band doesn't say movie star on it like yours does. <laughs> All right. The name is Brown. Uh, very nice of you to call because I haven't seen Rochester in nearly a week. Do you happen to know where he is? Who? Rochester. Oh, that friend of mine. Yes. Where's he been? That boy loves you, Mr. Benny. He really does. Uh-huh. Well, he went down to your hotel yesterday morning ready to work. That boy loves you. I know, I know. You said that random. Huh? Well, he got right in front of your hotel ready to work when he suddenly realized he'd forgotten his typewriter. His typewriter? What does he need a typewriter for? Doesn't he write your program? <laughs> no. Now, listen, Mr. Brown, or Random, or Harvest, or whatever your name is, tell that boy that loves me to be at my hotel tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Imagine making up such a ridiculous name as Random Harvest Brown. Fine chance he had to fool me. Come on, Dennis, let's go. Wait a minute, I'm going with you. All right, come on, play, Benny.
We ought to be there pretty soon now. What hospital is Mr. Benny in, Mr. Baker? I'm Mr. Benny. Bill Baker's in the Northwest Side Hospital on 83rd Street. Oh. You know, Mary, if I collect that 64 bucks, you and I will go out stepping. I love those nightclubs. You haven't been to a nightclub since the time you drank champagne out of Lillian Russell's slipper. <laughs> she had a small shoe, but I got loaded. <laughs> Hey, hey, driver, step on it, will you? Your wish is my command. Well, well, polite fellow, isn't he? Can't understand why Baker's still in bed. Well, the operation was only two weeks ago. Look, when I had my tonsils taken out, I went home the next day. You never left the house. Rochester took him out with a can opener. <laughs> he used regular instruments. Gee whiz, Mr. Benny, did Rochester really take your tonsils out? There was nothing to it. Snip, snip. Driver, a little faster, please. We want to get there. It is yours to request, mine to obey. <laughs> well, thanks. My, isn't he formal? Huh? Say, Jack, can't we stop at this little restaurant up here and get something to eat? I'm starving. Me too. We can eat at the hospital. Baker's room will be full of fruit and candy and nuts and everything. <laughs> hey, driver, that's the hospital right ahead, isn't it? It is mine to drive, yours to point out. Oh, stop. This is it, all right. Well, here we are. How much do I owe you, driver? That'll be 65 cents, or one dollar, including tip. <laughs> Wait a minute, what makes you think I'm going to give you a 35 cent tip? It is mine to dream, yours to disillusion. <laughs> well, just for that, here's a dollar. Goodbye, driver. Goodbye. If you like me, tell your friend. If not, not. <laughs> Here's the main entrance. Let's go in. Gee, it's a beautiful hospital. Wow, what a big lobby. Wow, what a big lobby. That echo again. He's got a cold tonight. <laughs> I'm Jack Benny. I'm Jack Benny. You try it, Dennis. I'm Dennis Day. I'm Dennis Day. Now you, Mary. I'm Mary Livingston. With a cold like this, I got to do a dame. <laughs> Fine echo. <laughs> here's the, uh, here's the information desk. I'll find out where to go. Say, miss. Yes, sir? Uh, can you tell me what room Mr. Phil Baker is in? I'm Jack Benny. So I see by your hat band. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, now, what, uh, what's Phil Baker's room number? He's on the fourth floor, blue eyes. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, kids. Here's the elevator. Going up. Step right in, please. Going up. Say, Jack, that guy sounds just like Rochester. Yeah, he does at that. What's your name, buddy? Brown. Random Harvard Brown. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Second floor, sprained ankles, four notches, one on the knee, both kidneys. That's not us. Going up. I can't get over that boy. Say, Random, do you know a fellow named Rochester? That boy really loves you, Mr. Benner. Hmm, <laughs> he knows me. Third floor, dog bites, frog bites, snake bites, mosquito bites, and bite me daddy ain't to the bar. <laughs> well, I can't get over that boy. Going up. Positively amazing. I swear it was Rochester. Fourth floor. Scratches from cats. Scratches from berry bushes. Scratches from matches to mobile. <laughs> and appendix. That's us. Thanks, operator. Oh, I don't operate. I just run the elevator. <laughs> I can't, I can't get over. Now, let's see, where's, uh, where's Phil's room? Uh, it must be down this corridor. Oh, yes. Hmm? Dr. Jones, report to surgery. Dr. Jones, report to surgery. We finally located your glasses. Yep, that's where they were.
must be very careless, huh? Hey, Mr. Benny, look at that guy running down the hall. Yeah, gee, he looks happy. You mean, hooray! Oh, mister, have a cigar. A cigar? Oh, does your wife have a baby? No, I'm Dr. Jones. They just found my glasses. Oh. <laughs> I know, I heard about it. I guess this is uh, Phil Baker's room here with the star on the door. Boy, is he hammy. Huh? Now, Jack. For heaven's sake, don't mention the $64 right away. Don't worry. I know how to handle it. Well, hello, Phil. How are you? Hello, Phil. Hi, Mr. Baker. Hello, kids. Glad you dropped in. <laughs> Dennis, stop applauding. Well, Phil, uh, Phil, old boy... <laughs> Well, Phil, uh, Phil, old boy, you're, you're looking great. How do you feel? Well, I'll probably get slugged for this, but I feel fine. <laughs> Why should I slug you? I just came up to see how you were getting along, wish you luck, and, uh, talk over a little matter of, uh, $64. Well, that's sweet of you, Jack, but I don't need any money. <laughs> Well, you see, Phil, I was talking to my lawyer last week, and he thinks I have a... He thinks I have a pretty good case. Did you make off like you fell in the subway again? I thought you gave up that racket. <laughs> I'm not suing the subway. Now, look, Phil, you owe me $64, and I want it right now. Now, come on, hand it over. Jack, will you please take your knee out of my incision? <laughs> oh, pardon me. Now, Phil, you give me that $64 or you'll be sorry. <laughs> Get it? On your program, you'll be sorry. Oh, Jack, be more subtle. Subtle schmuttle. I want my money. <laughs> now, Phil. Pardon me, Mr. Baker. Did I give you three little white pills about an hour ago? Yes, you did. <laughs> Who's that? That's Miss Stewart, my nurse. She's awfully absent-minded. Yeah, she seems to be, huh? Yesterday, she poured alcohol on my pancakes and rubbed my back with maple syrup. <laughs> alcohol on pancakes? I was so cockeyed, I fell out of bed four times. <laughs> well, that's awful. She really is absent-minded. This morning, she gave me a shot in the arm with a fountain pen. <laughs> a fountain pen? Ever shot. <laughs> That he remembered. <laughs> now listen, Phil, speaking of $64. Who's speaking of $64? Look, Phil, I know you're a sick man and all that, but technically, I won $64 when I was on your program. Now, the least you can do is give me another chance and another question. Okay, answer this one for $64. Shoot. Who's the cheapest guy in the world? I am. Now, give me that $64. <laughs> you're wrong, because I am, I'm not going to pay it. <laughs> now, listen here, Phil Baker. That must be my doctor. Come in. Well, well, how's my patient today? What are you doing out of bed, you bad boy? <laughs> I'm not the patient. That's Baker lying right there. Oh, well, you look sicker than he does. You've got to admit that. <laughs> I admit nothing. Say, Doc, can I get up today? I've got my own program to do. Well, I have to check on that. Open your mouth and say, ah, my, my, they're healing up fine. Wait a minute, Doc, you took out my appendix, not my tonsils. Who was under that ether, you or me? <laughs> Wait a minute, you mean to say you took out his tonsils and his appendix? Yeah, that's a special I was running last week. <laughs> oh, tonsils, appendix, and a tour through Radio City, 1250. <laughs> Uh, that's good value. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Baker, what you need is a little medicine. Take this pill and you'll feel fine. Okay. Well, where's the pill? It's right here, but I can't seem to get it off my finger. That's a wart. The pill's in the other hand. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, here you are. There. Now, good night, Mr. Baker. Sleep tight. <laughs> Sleep tight? Wait a minute, Doc. What kind of a pill was that you gave him? Strong sedative. He'll be in dreamland inside of a minute. Dreamland? I gotta work fast. Now, Phil, concentrate. Oh, Jack, let him alone. Phil needs rest. Well, he's going to sleep. What? Well, I, I need that $64. Now, Phil, Phil, open your eyes. 
Hey, now, listen to me. What do you want, nurse? I'm not your nurse. I'm Betty. Now, listen, Baker. My lawyer said that when I was on your program, I want $64. Now, I want that money right now. Kiss me goodnight, Miss Stewart. I'm not Miss Stewart. Now, I won't kiss you goodnight till I get that money. Now, give me, give me that check I filled out, Dennis. Here you are. You didn't take a pill. Wake up. Now, Phil, Phil, wake up. Baker, listen to me. Wake up. Now, Phil, listen to me. Will you ask me if I... And according to my lawyer, that was the right answer. Everybody knows how great oaks and little acorns grow, and it's quite an amazing achievement. But I know of a record of growth that's every bit as amazing. It's the record of delicious grape nuts flakes. During the past three years, the increase in your purchases of grape nuts flakes, and there's a reason. In fact, two big reasons. First, it's that malty rich flavor, the popular flavor of grape nuts in delicious toasty flake form. Second, it's that grand nourishment, for grape nuts flakes are a whole grain cereal, bringing you important food factors found in the natural whole wheat, plus extra vitamin B1. Food values recommended as a part of your daily diet by our National Nutrition Program. So join the swing to better breakfast. Serve delicious, nutritious grape nuts flakes, America's fastest growing breakfast cereal. That was the last number of the 15th program of the new Grape Nut Flake series. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And I'm very happy to announce that Bill Baker is feeling much better and will return to his own program this evening. Here's one for your memory books, friends. Note this name, Hot Grape Nuts Wheat Meal. Hot cereal member of the popular Grape Nuts family. Extra delicious, extra nutritious. It cooks extra fast. You'll smack your lips over its roasted wheat goodness. You'll relish that glorious full-bodied texture. Chock full of important whole grain food values, stepped up with added vitamin B. You got that name? Hot Grape Nuts Wheat Meal. This program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>